Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt and I'm here in Chicago with Hyundai's new Santa Fe and it is a looker. Not everything's perfect though, so today we're going to show you everything that we can about this new Santa Fe before we take it out for a spin later this year. Let's get into it. Now the first and biggest things are the looks and it looks incredibly Land Rover, incredibly Defender. If I was Land Rover, I'd probably be kind of pissed, but as a consumer, personally, I really love the look here. It looks boxy, it looks tough, but it still has apparently an aerodynamic enough shape to be really fuel efficient. We'll talk about fuel economy in a minute. It's got the H pattern style running lights up here with the full width LED headlight. And this is the calligraphy. And remember all the calligraphies have these little triangle patterns in the grill, Palisade, the previous Santa Fe, and so on. So you can see some of that nuance coming through in the new generation. Around the side we see we have gloss finished simpler wheels wheel arches and this being the calligraphy you get these 21 inch wheels they are really really cool multi-spoke design look really premium for something that otherwise looks like a good off-roader but this is the thing the completely boxy profile from here it's hard not to see defender with a completely squared off rear end but it's got an interesting floating roof design black a pillar b c and d pillar and interestingly here you've got an almost an activity handle so you can open the rear door Step here, put your hand here, and then get up onto your roof if you have an activity basket or you know roof basket, roof rack, something like that. And the rear design is a little funky, but it's funky with a purpose. You see it kind of bows out here because they've moved the power struts for the tailgate all the way out as far as they can, and that's to maximize trunk space. Of course, it's got Santa Fe and huge script, H pattern tail lights to match the headlights, and of course, single exhaust and then in terms of the trunk the press release does not want you to think of this as a trunk they want you to think of it as a terrace or a place that you're gonna hang out now like i said they've moved the struts for the power opening all the way to the sides to make this as big an opening as possible and it is huge it's very big we can fold the second row powered with these buttons right here and these third rows seats they're manual now with those second row seats up, you get about 40 cubic feet of space. That is pretty good, but look at these third row seats. They fold completely flat, or they would if that headrest wasn't catching right here. And then you do have a very, very big space to hang out. You've even got outlets, so if you wanna charge stuff, USB-C, vents, and your own climate dial back here. So I guess I could see what they're on about with the whole veranda trunk thing. But with everything folded down, look at how massive and cavernous this space is. This is like minivan levels of space. And under the tailgate, the H pattern stuff from the headlights, it's not over yet. It's on the inside of your tailgate. Kind of funky. You've also got close and lock. You'll love to see it. And now we want to address size. It seems a lot bigger than last year, and it is, but it's partially an illusion. This thing is actually only two inches longer than last year. That's not a huge change. The wheelbase, though, is over two inches longer, so they've stretched the wheels to the far ends of the car. But from a full profile perspective, this is still six inches shorter than the flagship Palisade. It's also four inches taller than it was last year, and a lot of that has to do with the roof rack that we can get here. Now we're gonna get into the third row, but it's interesting here. I'm gonna push this button here. It moves itself, this is mechanical, and then this is electric. You see, if I press this, nothing happens, but I can power recline the seat. But anyway, we're talking about the third row here. Stop moving. We're gonna jump in. It's a little tight to get in, if I'm honest. It could be because I just hit the power recline and started unfurling the seat, but I'm 6'1". It is, it's kind of tight, I won't lie to you. If you want a real third row, go for the Palisade, but headroom over six foot is actually pretty good. And you've got a lot of treats back here we showed in the trunk. You've got that power outlet, USB-C, vents, fan speed, cup holders. I mean, this is a lot of great stuff that you're not getting in this class from really anywhere else. And of course, big pano roof to bring in light and make it feel pretty open and airy. Now I would, if you wanted to make it feel even more airy, not get the black interior, but it does look pretty good with this white spec outside. And then we're gonna talk what's under the hood, engines. There's two that have been talked about so far. The first is a 2.5 turbocharged gas four cylinder, 277 horsepower, 311 pound feet, eight speed gearbox, front wheel drive as standard or all wheel drive, about 26 MPG combined. That's for front wheel drive, a little bit worse for all wheel 
drive you'll get. And then zero to 60 in about eight-ish seconds. These numbers should all sound pretty familiar. There's not been a huge change to either of the powertrains. The other option is a 1.6 turbo hybrid. That does 226 horsepower, so about 50 less than the gas. 195 pound-feet, so another 100 and 120 pound-feet less than the gas. Six-speed automatic transmission. And 36, that's the big benefit for the hybrid. 36 MPG combined, and that's with all-wheel drive. Zero to 60 in about nine seconds. The old Santa Fe did have a plug-in hybrid, and in Europe, they are getting a plug-in hybrid, so I would expect to get a plug-in hybrid Santa Fe a little bit later. And the new look for the Santa Fe is very off-roady, very adventure-ready, and typically you want to have some muscle to be able to tow stuff if you're going to go off-roading. Well, you can here. You get up to 4,500 pounds of towing capacity for the gas car. That's pretty good. The hybrid is going to do a bit less. That's 1,500 pounds, so that's about in line with something like a hybrid RAV4, but still pretty good. Now, what I did show you earlier on that calligraphy, that's a gas car. This is a hybrid. And you can see we have a much less pronounced exhaust port as well. And look at this little detail here. This is the attention to detail that you've never seen from Hyundai before. If you haven't been in a Hyundai in the last five years, this is some of the attention to detail that they're bringing now. Now there's an elephant in the room that's not here in Chicago, and it's the fact that this has an XRT trim. The concept was super sweet. Aggressive tires, wheels, a lift kit, skid plates, revised bumpers for approach and departure angle optimization. And there were some really Defender-esque accessories, the roof basket, the kind of like third row window, I don't even know, bring along basket. But the real XRT trim for this new Santa Fe is a lot less aggressive. It's a bit more in line with the rest of Hyundai's XRT offerings with a little bit more aggressive look and tires. And then we'll check out the second row. There's a couple things that we should address right away. First of all, you have a nice window shade. You love to see that. And you can get a bunch of different textures. This is more of like a carbon fiber looking texture. I'll see if you can get it in the light here. But everything is blacked out. Look at this. The door handle, the cup holders are in the door. You've got three level heated seats back here. Very nice, very soft padded Santa Fe in the matte black. This is really cool. But I did mention here, you can get a bench seat or you can get the captain's chairs like we have. It looks as if it would be power slide, but it's actually mechanical for your slide. It is power recline though, and you can lift up your thigh support down here as well. But I'm gonna step in, again, 6-1 test. I can go back a bit if I want. This is max leg space. Several inches of knee room. Look at this. Little shout out from the, the headlights as well. You've got grocery bag hangers back here. That's very thoughtful and nice. Head space check, even with the pano roof. Plenty of space, not gonna hit the nub in here. You'd love to see it. This is very Genesis USB-C's. This is also very Genesis, so I can adjust the passenger seat or the driver can from their position. But see, you've got ambient light back here. All the leather work is really pretty nice. I've got decent foot space. We were just in the Toyota Sequoia that had like seven different levels of, of floor, and this is, this is a lot cleaner. This is a lot more relaxed seating area. So big fan of the second row in the Santa Fe. And we mentioned the panel roof before, but we should talk about it in more detail. It's very much like the Palisade, where you have kind of a single dedicated sunroof for your front passengers, and then your second and third row gets a big sheet, big pane of glass individually to their own. So it's not a fully connected piece of glass, but still plenty of sunroof for you. Now, before we check out the front seats, I do want to show you we're back in the calligraphy and look at the light interior. Remember how I said that this was going to make the interior feel bigger? I think it absolutely is. Really nice kind of cream off-white interior here looks really good with kind of the lighter faux wood maybe it's real wood I don't know but let's take a look at the front seats we'll talk about that steering wheel in a minute because I know you're thinking about it but here we have really robust front seats and look at the stitching pattern does this look a little bit like the headlights it's supposed to now this seat has the lumbar, or the, excuse me, the leg ottoman function that we saw originally in the Ionic 5, these are heated, these are cooled. A lot of the interior here is made from sustainable materials. It's really cool. Again, check that out right there. The only thing that we'll kind of nick it on is the fact that in some markets, this is gonna be available with the ergo motion, kind of the faux massage function, and I don't think we're gonna get that here in the States. But look at the interior design here. Again, very Defender with the new steering wheel. That looks very Defender indeed. We've got physical physical climate controls down here. We've also got faux wood accenting all throughout the cabin. Again, a lot of sustainable materials made in here. We've got our Boppet style shifter that seems to be more and more common. And the center console here, this is interesting. It opens up both ways. 
I think this is a first. Actually, I'm pretty sure this is a first. So kind of a cool thing to see from Hyundai. And of course, you do have a dual glove box, kind of like you'd see in a pickup truck, but I've never seen this in a pickup truck. You open this up, and this has UVC sterilization, so it uses UV light to kill bacteria and germs on your phone if you put it in here. That is pretty cool. That is Genesis level stuff, along with basically the whole rest of the interior. And how could we not talk about technology? Now you have dual 12.3 inch screens. It's very Genesis when it's on this. Obviously we can't run because it's in a showroom, but it's a curved display, almost like you'd get in like an Escalade. We've got a fingerprint reader for your driver profiles. That's incredibly Mercedes of them. Look at this ambient light too. You love to see it. You love to see it. And of course here on your center screen, yes, whatever. We'll go to home. Totally new graphics. This is just like we saw on the Kona. This is very Genesis. And you've got loads and loads of stuff in here. Uh, this does have wireless Apple CarPlay. It's gonna get wireless Android Auto, over the air updates. It just feels way more expensive than something wearing a Hyundai badge. This feels more Genesis than ever. You do, or you will, have a head-up display here. You will get a 360 camera if we went into reverse. And of course, my favorite thing, we've got the change light for charge and charge and link. And we've also got dual wireless chargers. That is pretty thoughtful, pretty cool. There's that button for the UVC sterilization, which is up here. But that is everything that I can show you in Chicago here about the new Santa Fe. So make sure you stay tuned for later in the year when we get our hands on this thing and take it for a drive. We'll see you then.